Yehova Malak Allah Malamat Yehova Malak Yami Rakis Yehova Gadol Makarian Theos Yehova Adonai Yehova Elohim Kurios Theos Pantacreta Kurios Theos Pistols Alda at Yehova El Emuna Yehova Ibas Leon Kurios Otios O Pantacreta Basileos Basileon Kai Kurios Kurio Yehova Dabar Halal Elohim Dabar Halal Yehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura El Elohim Israel Jesus Christos Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion Kurion Nimahagion Pantacreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Zoan Logan Ogar Tautios Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Jesus Christos Kurion 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 Hagion 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 Panta Kreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Ehova Ishmal Kam Ehova Shama El Nakum Yehova El Nakum Yapa Netzak Israel La Shaker Derek Emuna Bakar Mishfat Shab the Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding the true fear of my Lord God resideth when you shall know in proper order, with proper exegesis, isagogics and categories, with proper dispensing technique of dispensations, the right mind of Christ. God the Father teaches the importance of being in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost breath by breath because God is spirit and they that worship him it's a binding factor it's a compulsory factor Dei that we have to worship him in spirit and in biblical truth the reason being all the time in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost is that we should know all the truth it is Lord God, the Holy Ghost alone, who shall guide us into all the truth. Any aspect of grieving or squelching or vexing or lying or being bitter against Lord God, the Holy Ghost, you are walking in your own doom, the death march where Satan is playing the beat and you are dancing upon that. So, dear brethren, every breath of your life, be sure, to be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost. 
with the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost alone, through his proper teaching and enlightenment, we can truly learn the fear of the Lord. And that fear of the Lord will make us to abstain from every mannerism of filth. It will make us to understand the old sin nature no longer to reign, being risen with Christ or seeking Christ to be our Savior, our Lord, our God. As Colossians 3 1 says, Seek those things that are above. And coming to Colossians 3 5, it doesn't mean to say mortify as the people would think it is mortify, but it is necrosate, which is called in the Greek put to death. So constant reverence to Lord God the Holy Ghost, so that we could be all the time aware not to grieve, not to squelch. Because the true fear of the Lord of our God begins when there is proper understanding of the truth, a true and proper relationship being established in Christ. And if you are not having the true fear in the Lord, you will be going only for the lip service. As Christ our Lord of our God teaches in Matthew 22 verses 1 through 14, the great parable about the wedding of his son, he calls you friend. I read us, we read that word, it's not philao. You have been given the equal privilege and equal opportunity. The same entering ministry which indwelt God the, God the Son, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in his humanity. The same entering ministry is being given for you. So he calls you Hyretas, friend. And he would ask you, where are your wedding garments? The garments of spiritual warfare, the battles of the Lord. And day by day, the word wedding called to be Gamos. As before the fall of man, the way how he created Adam and Eve to recreate themselves every day. Being involved in the pleasure of this human happiness, even given for unbelievers. Ecclesiastes 9.9 9. After they die, they have eternal hell. But we have for us salvation we have for us the word of god we have for us besides this a right man to a right woman a right woman to a right man so he claims where are your wedding garments the gamos day by day affair with lord day by day through your presence wherewith he says it is more blessed to give than to receive we have received from him the eternal life we have received lord and savior jesus christ but it is more blessed to give him, what? The fear of the Lord, the reverential fear of my Christ, the trembling fear in the presence of his glory every day. And what is that? If we have the fear of the Lord, our true reverence towards Christ, you will fulfill his commandments. That's what he said, if you love me, that's what today the many people don't understand. Husband is said to love and wife is said to respect, to obey. But people love to follow the trends of the thinking of men or the fashion of this world. And they do not even understand the terms. That husband has to love, wife has to obey. An reverential fear to submit. The church has to obey now to her husband, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that fear he talks. And he says, where are your wedding garments? And he doesn't call you a wicked sinner. He calls you friend. You know, this great and unique dispensation of the church age, what we are going through. God the Father has made with us a new covenant, not the covenant of the old. And this new covenant is the scribes. He has written the word of God. You know, we have to find that in Hebrews chapter 8, in verse 9 and 10. The new covenant is nothing but is built up with the scribes. That means every believer in the reverential fear of the word of the Lord of a God should be a scribe. And as a scribe, you have to go and make disciples in the sense of Hebrews 5.14, looking upon the time you should be the communicator of Bible doctrine. And when there is proper teaching of the word of the Lord of a God, a proper revolution of the mind of Christ, there not only the people will perish, 
but they will give great fear to God, true reverence to Christ. And today people are not having that fear because no proper teaching through the pastor teachers. Everyone who has come, they have come for the sake of their belly, the sake of their life to be survived as we are going to read from Hosea too. They want the meat, the bread, the oil, the flax. They want the wool and the drinks and the wine. But they don't want my Lord's true covenant to be established, the way how he marries us in righteousness, in judgment, in integrity of his truth. They don't want to build up upon that. And this flattering man, they fail to teach the word of God day by day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept. And they change the covenant of God more worse than the old covenant. With the pain of our heart, we shall look that. Why this man, they don't give reverence. Purely the failure of the pastor teachers. Therefore, he says, I haven't sent them. If they would have been sent by me, they would have made you to come back and listen to the counsel of the word of God. But they have ran. For what? To feed their belly. And not to feed the true fear of Christ among these people with proper exposition of the truth. As we read several times, read this epistle to the Holy Brethren, First Thessalonians 5.27, we find that. The word Anagaleo, in First Peter 1, we read again, He has called us to show forth His praises, ex agaleo, to show forth, which is to expound the things pertaining to Lord's glory. And every believer, not just the pastor teacher, to read the epistle among the holy brethren so that they could understand to analyze and exegete the passages. Why? Because where there is proper revolution or proper teaching of the word of God, there people will surely fear and tremble because the present Christendom, what we are looking, even worse things to happen, to come around because apostasy is to the core already into the pulpits. When there is no proper understanding of the Word of God, a proper knowing of the Word of God, a proper acquaintation with the great, glorious, glorious, glorious characters of my Christ, you will not have that fear. The same thing what Isaiah was been shown in chapter 6. He immediately confesses that he is living in the midst of unclean lips. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and he is a man of unclean lips. And the reason why he says that he is a man of unclean lips and he resides in the midst of these unclean lips, because when the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been mentioned, they ridicule, they mock, they make fun of his name. Today, the present Christendom is no way far better than that. In fact, it is too worse than that. The reason is no proper teaching. And today, the pastor teachers are coming. Did not even know why they are entering into this ministry. They will have a very terrible judgment, dear brethren, says James 3.1. But at this man, they are not having that reverential fear of Christ, but rather in return all the days of this life. They're continuing in the standards of that which could profit them, which could benefit them, but not and never the glory of Christ. Dear brethren, using the privacy of our priesthood to confess our sins through rebound, let's come back and learn the things which God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Christ. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace of Lord to learn the word. What else do we have the work on this earth, O Father, than to give you right reverence which is due unto thy name through the word? Only in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. Since, Father, you have said in Isaiah 66, 1 and 2, you look for such a man 
who has a true reverence for the word. And the way how the demons believe, O Lord, that there is only one true Lord of our God, that's Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And they become shadowing off to be seized. Yet, O Lord, today the generations of these people who are there in apostasy to the core in the present Christendom, they think happiness is found for them in the circumstances and not a true fearing relationship with thee. Father, the way have these men that have gone not to understand that it is our duty, O Lord, as you have given for us this great privilege of a burdened one to carry your work so that we could tell them, be wise and not be fools in your own eyes. The troubles, the trails, the persecutions, the sufferings which they are going through is purely they have neglected your word and to give to your word proper revolution and proper fear. And yet, O Father, you have given grace one more day in our lives to understand what is your delight to make us to realize the new covenant which you have made to write in our hearts the word, not like the old one where they forgot, but the new one to become each and every believer. As Matthew thirteen fifty two states, kingdom of God is like a scribe's. And yet, O Lord, many people haven't come to become scribes, though you have called them to grow up into scribes. They are acting more worse than the Old Testament covenant which you have made through the children of Israelites. If not, O Lord, if they would have the reverential fear of thee, they would have been already the writers of the word of God. And in that sure covenant of you of this New Testament of Kaine Dideke, what you have given unto us, there would have been a quality of new spiritual species unto thee. Let a father they are fearing men rather than your word. Help us, O Lord, to teach them, to enlighten them, to show forth what exactly is the pattern that have kept us alive to be in this great and unique privilege of the church age. Under the same word, Hieratos, camp, the comrades sharing the same equal privilege and equal opportunity of Christ to serve thee in spirit and in truth. So, Father, as we're going to study these things, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this message which are prepared for us on today's date in eternity past only for thy glory. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. In Second Chronicles, chapter 17, in verse number 7 through 10, if we would read, however, we have been looking into that subject. Second Chronicles, chapter 17, King Yehoshaphat, when God the Father teaches to him how he has to be the true disciple to the Lord, the work of him to be thought of. We find when his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord, moreover he took away the high places and the grooves out of Judah. If your heart is not been lifted up in the fear of the Lord of a God, you cannot remove those things which are a abominational filth in the sight of the Lord. You may be happy to worship at one end, idols, at one end, the luxuries of this life, and at the other end, you cannot say that you are truly a true believer in Christ. The great recommendation given in Acts chapter 15, when the council of James in that circumcision viewpoint, in verse number 20, he says, Write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and fornication and things strangled. You know what is this word strangled? The Greek word is niktos. P being silent over there. It says niktos. That means 
the animal has been deprived of life without the shedding of blood. Today you are doing the same work to Lord God the Holy Ghost. We have been told not to squelch. We have been told not to make a lupao, but rather make kairete pantote, meant to say all the time rejoice, all the time rejoice in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost. And when Lord God the Holy Ghost is happy concerning you, then you can truly have this true life in Christ. But what you're doing, you're making up your life in the standards of strangling Lord God the Holy Ghost. And therefore you don't fear to come to learn the word of God. You may be thinking upon, for example, to look into any objective knowledge of this earth in your trade of your skill craftsmanship. A trained labor, skilled laborers, many of the companies which come to my country, India, they don't find enough skilled laborers. Like the GM Motors which has come, it has been locked or closed out. Many things because they're not able to find enough skilled laborers. So here, having the skilled laborers for your particular mechanism of your motorcycle or your four-wheeler or anything, being trained up, giving good service and making the things available, it will make them to be successful. So, it is going to give them a proper training, proper process. Here also, strangling, you are not being properly trained. The work of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, is to train you up, to make it to be rendered fit. So, what you do, you just let go. The proper training... And in every other field, you are so much interested to know to be successful in that particular area. For example, a computer software or computer hardware, repairing of the softwares or the hardwares. Yeah, the details of life. You want to upgrade yourself. You want to make it up to know very well how this, how that. Because now you can find the technology being changing and people would easily love to upgrade and to become more skilled laborers. You know how accurate you are for the details of life. Because you'll have competition if you don't upgrade. But containing or pertaining to the things of God in heaven, you haven't even upgraded even a single ounce that you shall not strangle Lord God the Holy Ghost. You know, looking upon your lives, the way how you grieve and squelch and wax and lie, it is very simple. The way how you sow, the same thing you will reap back. You don't have any love towards the word of God. No, that's what we said, no reverential fear. The same thing in Isaiah 6. They mock, they ridicule. The same thing what they're practicing today in our pulpits. Teaching the word of Lord God, which has to be seriously every day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, you mock, you ridicule. That the word says, women shall not have, never have authority to talk over men, you ridicule. And there we look in the life of Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 19. For three months he went to dispute, but the people never accepted it. They spoke evil of him, they did all many things. So what does he do? He left that place. He goes to take up his own school, Tyrannius. He teaches there for two years the word of God. And there for three months they were so much disturbed or so much against the truth thinking that it really made their souls to be bitter. And for that we look an example about uh, Esau's wife and over uh, Rebekah's case in Genesis 26. So the way how you are being grieved, you know how human can do that, the blessings which should be going to Esau, but the divine plan of God is different. He knows to whom the things have to happen, they will happen. And once Lord God the Father has opened it up, no one can close it. And Lord God the Father has closed it up, no one can open it. Because He is Alpha through Omega. He is RK through Teleos. So there can be nothing. He is Pantocrator. So no matter whether the grudge between Rebecca and Esau's wife or something matters like that, Yet it is the plan of God to whom to be blessed. Already Esau sold the birthright. 
and we look in that operation how the things were been given to Isa, to Jacob rather than Isa. And the father is also very cunning. He wants to ask him, come near, I want to look a smell at you and I want to see because his eyes were not good. So he finds, calls him to look into the smell. And he doesn't say that he is smelling like Isa, but he says it is the fresh field of a smell which the Lord has given him this invasion. You know, even he's also playing some cunning, tricky things. You know, Lord God, the Holy Ghost is so specific in recording each and everything in detail. He didn't say, Isa has been blessed in such a way. He says, it is like the fresh field which the Lord has given him. But he did not go for hunting. He just came back and wore the clothes and gave the goat which his mother cooked. So we look every cunning detail. So the way how you sow, the same way you will reap. That's the point we illustrated for this Acts 19 in verse 9. For a span of three months, he was teaching them the word of God. But there, they had hatred. Don't worry, dear brethren. The great strangling work you do against Lord God, the Holy Ghost... You are deceiving your true life in Christ. There is nothing that God the Father can lose. A Lord God the Son can lose. A Lord God the Holy Ghost, except being grieved and squelched and waxed and lied. There is nothing you can lose. You are going to lose forever in eternity. You will, found, you will be found naked and God the Father would ask, Friend, where are your wedding garments? And there is nothing you can be answering back for your my. You will be speechless. Your alibis, your excuses, your reasons, your XYZ term saying that for this reason I was not fearful to God. You know, dear brethren, the day would come, he says, there would be no one to teach. Everyone would have the fear of the Lord. This new covenant, what he compares and writes in Jeremiah 31. There is no need for any one other person to teach. Because they will learn the fear of the Lord when they become scribes in writing the word of the Lord. That's very simple. But you don't write the word of the Lord, you don't know exactly what is the mind of Christ. Even when Moses was called in Exodus chapter 24, after six days, the seventh day has been called upon to the mountain. Even six days he was waiting there. The same thing, you may read your Bible four or five times or six times. As even Elijah says in Second Kings 13, 19, Why did he stop for three times? Why haven't you gone for five or six times? You know, the better you read the Bible, the better you may think you have learned now. After you're reading the Bible, there is nothing you can get. You have to write the Bible as scribe. Now that's the word, give this command to the priests when he says, who are the priests? The people who teach the word of God. And the vigor and valor of them is a scribal authority. So the pattern what God the Father has fixed and kept in the standards of the word of the Lord of a God is so clear and pure and true that if you are not becoming a scribe, you are no way into the new covenant of the Lord. That's what he says in Matthew 13, 52, in comparison of Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Being a scribe of the Lord, you can go and make disciples of all the nations. And when you're making disciples of all the nations, the great dread of the Lord or the fear of the Lord will fall among those nations. That's the reason we read in Exodus 15, 13, he leads them in his strength to his holy tabernacle. Why? We look the categories of the people from verse 14, 15. He says, the fear and the dread fell upon them, the fear and the dread fell upon them, the princes or the dukes or whatever they could be, the chieftains or the captains among those places. They are having that fear. There is none they could stand against the word of the Lord. They could understand that. If they are in the sense to realize that God is with them when they, when they are growing up to be like a scribe, there is none who can stand against them. But how foolish these people they are, he writes again in Jeremiah chapter 9. He says over here in Jeremiah chapter 9, the process, the way, how they are strangling Lord God the Holy Ghost. In Jeremiah, in chapter 9, we have these words. 
beginning over here with verse number 14. He says, The Lord, because, the Lord said, Because they have forsaken my law which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice. Neither walked therein, but have walked after the imagination of their own heart, and after Baalim, which their fathers taught them. Therefore thus said the Lord of hosts, of God of Israel, Behold, I will feed them with this, even this people with wormwood, and give them water of gall to drink. And then he says in verse 16, I will scatter them also among the heathen whom neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send sword after them, till I have consumed them. Then for he says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, Consider you and call for the mourning woman, that they may come, and send for cunning woman, that they may become. And then he says, And let them make haste, and take up a wailing for us, that our eyes may run down with tears, and our eyelids gush out with waters. And the goes on to say that the death has come upon us, and he has said all the things, saying that you have been wailing every one to their neighbors with lamentations, because he says that the voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded. Because we have forsaken the land, because our dwellings have cast us out. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O you woman, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth. And teach your daughters wailing, and every one a neighbor lamentation, for death is come up into our windows, and is entered into our palaces, to cut off the children from without, and the young men from the streets. Speak, thus said the Lord, even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field, and as a handful after the harvestmen, and none shall gather. The reasons we look, because you may be having many troubles on this life, but he says, come back and look, why you are having these troubles? What are the reasons? You know, in verse 13, the Lord said, because they have forsaken the law. In verse 12 of this Jeremiah 9, he says, Who is wise man that they may understand this? And to whom the mouth of the Lord hath spoken that they may declare, you know, Nagat. Dear brethren, your happiness is not found in circumstances. Your happiness is truly built and found upon your right and true relationship with the word of God. That's the point what I want to illustrate. Because people foolishly think why the men have become like a dung. You know, in this COVID season, we find the country Italy or the country America, how they have buried the men in the first season. So here we look, you fear wise, understand. And he says, the voice of wailing, the voice which has been there in your dwellings, he says, it is all because of you not considering the law of the Lord, not walking according to the truth of the Lord. So the logic is very, very simple and true for us over here to realize. So the same thing he writes, for death is come upon into our windows and is entered into our palaces to cut off the children from without the young man from the streets. How many deaths in this covert? People may think and consider it to be a bio war, but you have to realize, if you are wise enough, you don't have the fear of the Lord. The reasons are very clear, dear brother, and when he says in Exodus chapter 24, the way of these people, they would come, and I would make them to be away. But you, Moses, you alone come. They want them to be only for a reason, because that's the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord in Exodus 34, the way how Moses pays back that great obedience to Christ, just prostrating himself or falling before him in the earth. You know, you really not understood the fear of the Lord, which is so vast and great in the word of God through the great many men who were the true servants of Christ. But now in the present Christendom, though the death has come unto your windows, though it is entered into your palaces, it has cut off your children, the young man from the street, 
Yet you are not wise to consider what is going wrong. So he says in verse 22, Speak thus said the Lord, even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field and as a handful after the harvestmen, and none shall gather them, were it not the fact in the COVID that so many people were been buried in such a way. In Italy or in America, you have that videos in the YouTube, you can go and check. Thus said the Lord God, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let that the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth. The word understandeth, dear brethren, is very, very important over here. It is called to be sakel, and the word sakel meant to say, in spite of all the pressure you will have, a pressure like a thorn of an experience all the time. You have to be as a scribe and you have to go on making disciples of all the nations. That's very, very simple and clear in the word of God. Whether you believe it or accept it or understand it or not, because the pictographical representation of the truth, the one who could understand Sakel is the one who is going to grow up into Grammatias and who is going to make in return disciples of all the nations. That's very simple. It may be something stupid for you, but the fact is you have to be Matthew 13, 52. If you are not Matthew 13, 52, you cannot be into the kingdom of God because in Hebrews 8, 10, we find a better covenant which he teaches, a covenant being written upon our hearts. And when Christ our Lord our God himself, he wrote with his finger in Exodus 24, the law and he gave upon the tablet stones. We, the new covenant, because the old covenant was not sticking to the truth. They mocked, they ridiculed. The same thing with the church age. The people, they are not sticking to the new covenant. In fact, indeed, they did not even understand this new covenant which God the Father has made with his finger to write upon our hearts like scribes, which we have to write the word of God from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. As kings, we have to reign in Christ in making up like Jehoshaphat, what he did in Second Chronicles 17. And send all nations to understand the teaching of the word of the Lord, then there will be none who could stand against the great grace of God. Every man will come to his neighbor, fulfilling Isaiah 28 9, when the truth, judgments of the Lord, the statutes of my Lord are been fulfilled. Then people will come in search. That's what he says. When we have been depending upon the word of the Lord of God to be established, the people of these nations will come to learn the righteousness of God. Read that in Isaiah 28 verse 9. First, we have to establish on this earth the statutes and the judgments of God. The same thing in Isaiah 42 4, when the servant of the Lord, that is Jehovah Elohim, sending his son, no matter the things the people will be trying to discourage, no matter the things will try to fail, he says he will not be discouraged. He will not have that weak heart to let go. But he says he will stand firm and he will make to shine the law of the word of the Lord of a God among these nations. And today we need that work in our pulpits. Because the people may go on in this 21st century saying that we have been technological and those things are this, these things are that. No, dear brethren. You may grow up, you may advance, but if you are not upgrading yourselves in the fear of God to know what is the kingdom of God through the right word of Lord God in his new covenant which God the Father has made for us in Hebrews 8.10, dear brethren, you are going to lose many things. Therefore, Lord of God would call, my friend, wear your wedding garments. He emphasizes further that you will be silent, you will be speechless. And the word he says over here in Jeremiah, Sakel, 
and the word sakil meant to say over here the one who glorieth let him glory that he understandeth he knoweth me the first understanding is what no matter whatever may be the pressure in life he is going to make disciples of all the nations that is what we read the word in the ancient pictographical representation <laughs> being represented by three pictographical alphabets number one the pressure number two the palm of the hand number three the lama stick the pressure what we look is so great in this life that people are just trying to let go the fear of the Lord the reason is that they're not wise that's what we find in very simple terms over here why they are not wise why they're not able to make up because no proper teaching <coughs> No proper exposition of the truth. And though the Lord God says in Proverbs 22 in verse 18, we find that where there is no proper revolution of the word of Lord God, there the people will perish at in every generation. God's faithfulness is so great. He will send his men coming from the right hand of God the Father to be the angels of the church and teach them. Their work is only to inculcate, to study and to teach. Second Timothy 2.15 Their work is to go back and teach the word of God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and inculcate the truth in the ability given by God the Father. But we find people know teaching truth today. Where is the order every day to assemble into the church? They have lost it. Where is the order every day to partake in a Eucharist? They have lost it. And weekly ones, they love to assemble. Monthly ones, they love to come. Dear brethren, the way you are neglecting, you will be found speechless. Because God the Father says, Shakel and Yada. Or oida. Understanding is called shakel. And the word oida or the one who glorieth, let him glory that he understandeth me and knoweth me. The word knoweth is yada or oida. So what is it meant to say? The word knoweth or oida or yada is very simple. To make into your life to get every thought, every thought, every thought. And whatever the perception gates are there for you, which you can make it to enter to the door, he says, completely fix upon Christ. That's what we find in Second Corinthians chapter 10, to get every thought into captivity for Christ. So if you glory, you, you glory in that, that you understand the Lord and the understanding process of the Lord is very simple. No matter whatever may be the pressure in life, whatever alibis may be in your life, whatever reasons may be in your life, your first primary duty to Christ is to carry your cross every day, follow my Christ and grow up into grammatias. And joining as disciples, teach the word of God. That's very great and very simple procedure to know that you understand God. That you know what him, that you understand the him, that you regard him. You might be having many pressures in life. Those pressures are nothing tomorrow when you are being speechless. When God the Father would ask you, friend, wear your wedding garments. He calls you to tie up your hands and legs, your hands, because you haven't grown up like a scribe. The order is very important over here. The second one, your walk of feet on this life, you are not going to become or uh, making the spread of evangelism through your work, through your life, or wherever you have been kept. He would just tie up your hands and legs and he'll ask you to be put into the outer darkness, which is the lake of fire. And there we also look a note. Those who don't use the talents to guard as that one man who hidden and kept the ten, the ten talented man made ten, the five talented made five, but the one who had one, he did not do anything. Even those who have been given in the church the gift, the gift of helps, the gift of administration, the gift of a great ambassadorship work for every believer by default, the gift of the pastor teacher, the gift of an evangelism. 
If you're not trained up, if you're not growing up, even you will be tied up there and put into the lake of fire because you'll be speechless. What have you done with the gift what God has given to you every day? You took all grace from God. You took the sunlight, air and water from the Lord and you produced thorns and thistles. It is the same water which cometh on other plants which gives the fruit, but on this plant it comes thorns and thistles because by nature you are wild. So you have been engrafted to the pure olive one. Don't be wild, he says, you are engrafted. And being engrafted in Romans 11, he teaches us now to produce good fruits. Because he did not spare the original branches, far less you think you can be spared. <laughs> So he says he's going to simply chop you off. Be careful with him. He's going to simply cut you off. He did not spare the original branches, far less you think you could be spared. So the one who understands that no matter whatever may be the pressure in life, the solid thing what he needs to understand. You have to be a product grown up into grammatias or scribes and you have to go and make disciples. This is what God the Father says, if anyone would glory, let him glory in this. Let him have this kabot thing in him. And even the word glory, what we read. The man who is short of the things which God intended him or what God demands him. So here we find the word, let him glory. He is given that the word over here is halal. That means, let him shine. So the one who shineth, let him shine. And what is the word halal? We find the word over here, called to be all the time having a great expression of joy that you are now a disciple to the word of God. But by default in the church, every believer, John 1 to well, to them he gave the power or exudes authority to become the sons of God. And the word sons over there is tekna again. And the word tekna meant to say, disciples. You're born by default in the church age to be a disciple. So if you ever you shine, you shine that you know what Lord God. You shine that you know what and understand that Lord God. And understand that is called to be shakel. No matter whatever may be the pressure in life, you have taken up your cross every day, followed by Christ, and you're grown up into gravity. Yes. And that's what Apostle Paul did after his near death of experience in Acts chapter 14. The same thing what Christ our Lord our God did. He made he made disciples. He made disciples. The same thing was commissioned in Isaiah chapter 8 seal the law among thy disciples train them up the word of God just don't make a business of coming them to weekly once and spoil the fear of the Lord of a God in the minds of those men do not harass them with that but rather train them up to be the right fear for Christ only as disciples growing up into grammar yes and that's why we have been told every day every day day by day day by day carry your cross carry your cross follow by Christ Every day, literally every day, within 24 hours, if you have morning session to class, come back and learn the word. If you have evening session, come back and learn the word. You know, when there is a failure of proper teaching of the word of God there, not only the people will perish, the fear of Lord God is gone forever. So he says, the one who glorieth, let him glory, or shineth, let him shine, that he understandeth and knoweth me. And he says that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth. And in these things I delight. The Hebrew word is very, very important. It's called to be kapats. And the word kapats meant to say the good pleasure of God the Father. And what is the good pleasure of God the Father? From the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, you build a wall of fortification like a scribe, and you open up your mouth no matter whatever may be the pressure to be a disciple of truth and that's the delight of the Lord and he desires because it's necessary now and today we don't find many men who are doing the great delight of God the Father in action so he says over here dear brethren in verse number 25, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. That means they haven't kept the first covenant of God. If not, God wouldn't have needed the better covenant, the new covenant which he said. You just partake in the elements of the Lord and you call to be a new covenant. No, he says over here in Hebrews 8, he is writing upon your hearts a new covenant. A new covenant where every believer should be like a scribe in Christ. 
So Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Amnon and Moab and all that are the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness for all these nations are uncircumcised and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in their heart. Dear brethren, God the Father delighteth in the things which he says to build up loving kindness called Kesed, called to be judgment, Mishvat, called to be righteousness, Sidkenu, double six, double six called. The same thing we have over here in Hosea chapter 2, which should certainly prick your heart. Beginning with verse number 4. I will not have mercy upon her children, for they be the children of whoredoms. For their mother hath played the harlot, she hath conceived them, hath done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers. You know, the lovers are the foul swans. Today the church is running behind the lovers who would teach to you the itching ears, who would entertain you, who would emotionalize you, who would give you ecstasy, but not edification. I repeat, not edification. Desire lovers. Therefore they love to have with you everything, saying that prosperity gospel, blessing gospel, but never they will say, come every day, carry your cross, follow my Christ every day, learn the word of God, being taught categorically, isagogically, exegetically, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept. Now they will say that for you because they are lovers. They are not legally wedded for you. Therefore we find that word over there in Hebrews chapter 12, when he calls them bastard Christians. Illegitimate bastard children you are. Because you are not legally wedded to Christ. And the reason why you are illegitimate, because you are not carrying the suffering of Christ. And what is the burden of Christ? Every day graduate in the word of God, grow up into grammatias, go and make disciples of all the nations. That burden you are not carrying. Therefore uses the word as you are bastards called to be illegitimate bastard Christians, not legally born to Christ. If you were legally born to Christ, if your husband was Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you would express your love affair in that wedding garment that could be upon you. But you are found naked. No wedding garment. No everyday affair with Christ. So where you go? You go to your lovers. The lovers who could teach you, who could train you to give money. <laughs> to tell you all false things as we read that in Jeremiah. He says, they say in chapter 6, we find that. They say, Peace, peace, but there is no peace to the wicked. It's a false man. It's absolutely vain, he says. The lovers will come to give you peace. They love to daub you with untempered mortar. They love to have with you sweet sugar-coated preachings. Because they don't want to be the fear of God, neither they want to make you to know the fear of God. If a pastor teacher is not a scribe, he cannot make others to be a scribe. So what does he make? He loves to inculcate to you in the sheer ruts of oratory of the details of life. Your destination is from point A to point Z. For example, A, your beginning point, and you have to reach Z. In the meantime, you have lot many alphabets. From B to Y. So if you think while you're traveling in a train or traveling in a place... To reach your destination either by car, road, not by flight. So what happens? Or in a bicycle or your walk or your motorcycle. You think you have reached point B and that's your destiny and you will try to settle there. Looking upon that point B is enough. No. You have to reach point Z. That's your destiny. Today, people are happy to illustrate to you the things of the details of life, about prosperity gospel, about this, about that, but they're not telling you if you have not reached the destiny Z with wedding garments in the presence of God because of the great grace provision given to every believer because he says many are called but only few are chosen. If you're not making up your destiny there to Z and if you're having your details of life from B to Y, he says, that's the destiny. No. Today, pastors are emphasizing not what is your life after death. The calling with which God the Father has called you to be a true disciple to Christ. They are making you to become bastard Christians. That's what the KJV says in Hebrews 12. 
But the Greek says naughty as illegitimate bastard Christians because they love to be with the lovers, not with the husband. The same thing what here we find a lesson of spiritual adultery in the standards of Israel. The same thing what we need to compare that to the church. We are more worse than that. Because we have been given something better of a new covenant. And the something better of a new covenant. Oh, Kaine the Deke joined as a disciple growing up into grammatias. If you are not a scribe, just forget it to enter into heaven. Because you have to be making known to this world the fear of God. When there is proper teaching, we look that in Second Chronicles 17, 8 and 9. Seventeenth verse, 17th chapter, verse 8 and 9. When there is proper teaching of the word of God, in verse 10 he says, Fear fell upon the nations. But today if the culprits are pastors themselves in the pulpits, as Wilmington Guide writes a note on that. And today as we look in Revelation 2 and 3, it's not the claptes and the last days, as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's time, he says. The claptes and last days, they have, made, uh, they have made a den of thieves. It is a prayer house, but they made it to be a den of thieves. But today when we look in Revelation 2 and 3, Satan's throne is there. And Satan's establishment has happened in such a way in procuring false pastor teachers through copulation. Satan has taken the place, Satan has established the throne, and Satan is producing no false pastor teachers. That's why you find your lovers. Many will come, so you have to test the Spirit. He says in 1 John 4, be careful. If they're not abiding in Christ, if they're not teaching to you the word of God, if they're not emphasizing the real burden of Christ, then you should realize your life is in danger. You will be found over there in the heaven naked and you will be speechless. No reasons, no excuses. You may find to say that I am a clever talker so that I can go and talk to God and give him the reasons and behind the reasons why I haven't come to church, why I haven't wear the wedding garments, why I haven't been prepared for the Lord. All those reasons, he says, you will be speechless. You may be prepared saying that because of my son, because of my daughter, because of my husband, because of my wife, because of my XYZ, I love the church or I haven't come to learn the word of God. God the Father knows every reason behind that and he knows very well what a cunning fool you are. Because Adam began with that, passing down the patsy towards the Eve. And Eve, not taking the responsibility, she passed down the patsy towards Satan. And God the Father knows very well. And when he has given Adam a chance to talk, he did not take the responsibility, but rather he blames God saying that, you have given me this woman. <laughs> That's how man is. They don't have any proper reasoning to understand. So there he says, you will be speechless. Don't worry, dear brethren. You'll be absolutely speechless. Why you went to your lovers? Why you haven't to come to kneel down in the presence of God the Father and know the truth and ask God the Father to guide you into all the truth? You thought kneeling down is a punishment. Though the word says the time will come in Philippians as well as in Isaiah 45. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the only true Lord of a God. But you Christians never kneel. Don't worry. You may be having your knee problems. <laughs> and once you get your either of the leg being amputated because of any sickness or because of any accidents, then you will understand the importance of losing forever. That how you would have been graced out earlier to kneel in the presence of God and do the work of God. The thing which belonged to God which you haven't done, the thing which you should learn from the word of God which you haven't done. When you have been amputated or when you have been into the orthopedic department of any hospitals, big major hospitals, half bodies being, being diseased, having their hands broken up, their legs broken up. And in fact, if it has been needed with a silly small accident forever, the right hand of you, which has to be writing the word of God, has been absolutely, it is absolutely deceased, though they try to operate several times. It's not able to gain back. Because from the spinal cord of the nerves, which has been linked to that right hand, they say it has been detached. How much they try to get it, it is not coming to operate. A well boy, a very engaged boy, in the history of my own family line 
before those days could happen or the days of evil can strike you out because you're not having the fear of the Lord. Give back to God that which is due unto him. He will protect you. Don't try to play games with my God. He knows everything. So he says he will remain speechless. What all may be the reasons in your life. You cannot come to talk over there because they are your own brainchild imaginations. Ignorance of the work of the Lord. He says, cursed is the one who does the work of the Lord our God ignorantly. Ignorance leadeth to all those things. Because we have been noted, Satan tries to make you up everything, but not the truth. Because it itself hates the truth. No matter however great salvation God has provided for them, they rebelled, they rejected, and they're going now to be prepared for lack of fire. But human, what God the Father in his humble way, who came in the form of flesh as a mediator between God and man, even you're also loving to reject. And those who have accepted Christ, they are loving to reject, to come to the full thorough knowledge of the word of God. Don't worry, you will pay back. What you're losing now, you may be having to think you will give some reasons and alibis. No, dear brethren. The time is short. You may say you might have not find a good pastor for you in your times. You had a good knees, you had a good Bible in your hand. You would have searched diligently because God the Father says, knock, ask and seek. You haven't done that with Christ. You paid your nominal duty to God. Having to read one verse in the calendar and go on with your life. No, dear brother, it's not possible. Your alibis, you may say you are in the dark period of ages. No, dear brethren, God the Father is fair. He has all the reasons if you people would have searched out for the truth. You would have sent William Carey long back, not in the 17th century or 18th century. But you were not searching for the truth. And that it is the grace of the Lord of our God that none should be perished. He sent in the first century itself Apostle Thomas to my country, India. Then why did it take so long for another 1700 years to be added to get Bible in our own hands? The already the Rome and other people in the Greek culture, they were writing because the word of God has been writing there, written there. It depends upon your intensity of love towards Christ. With what intensity you put, the same thing is going to give you back. If you're having a great zeal and a great desire towards Lord God, the Father in heaven, is going to open up the doors for you to learn more. If it would be nominal, even God would pay nominal. If you would show love of God for 30%, God would reveal only 30% to you. If you would show 60%, he would show 60% to you. If you would show 100% of love, he would show to you 100% of revolution to you. The measure with what you measure, the same thing will be measured by, the same relationship with God. But now in this enlightenment period of the 21st century, having everything in the tip of your finger, in your smartphones, and earlier people wouldn't have had that knowledge, but now you find that in Google, you find that in your YouTubes, you find that even in the PDF drives, many books. Earlier you were you had to go, travel, you have to get back those things. But now you find the finger of your tip. Wherever you are on your data, just go back and Google it out and you will find solution. Whether it may be accurate or not, you have to cross-check it again. But you are having now in your fingers. But what are you doing that with the original language of the scriptures? You know, the teaching, what you are preaching, you would love to go back and compare with many commentaries. But commentaries not found in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, they will misguide you, they will mislead you. And misguiding and misleading the church, not making them to become the disciples, not making them to come back and carry their cross every day and follow my Christ. Surely you will make the fear of God vanish from there. When there is no fear of Lord God, there surely the people have not been given proper teaching. And he will pay for it. Because James 3 1 says, not many men to become the preachers of the word of God. But you want to become preacher, you want to become this, you want to become that. As if you can think you have some words better than that to talk. No, dear brother, your every word will be answered, he says in John. 
Your every word will be brought into account, every argatha's word, every idle word which is not producing them the character of Christ. So don't be lovers. The way how here Hosea teaches to us, she's saying that is what the comparison to then apostate Israel and now to the apostate church because people will have itching ears as he said in Second Timothy that perilous times will enter when the people will not endure sound Bible doctrine. They don't want that which is the truth. They want what their itching ears would love to listen. <laughs> I think no itching ear would love to listen that they will be found naked in the heaven and they will be put into the outer darkness. No itching ear would be loving there because they want all the things to hear, to please them, to appreciate them by the committee, by the church, or making themselves to be in the standards of the lustful patterns of all in nature. Everyone want that. You know, any man will take appreciation. So they want that appreciation, but they don't want to look what is your fate in the mirror of the word of God. And they're not prepared. As we read that Jeremiah chapter 9, how the doors of the windows, of the death is entering into the windows, how they've entered into the palaces, how the young men have been cut off, the children been taken out. How you will find the carcasses of this man as dung. <coughs> He writes in verse 12, Who is wise? Let him understand these things. Because they have forsaken the law of the Lord of a God. They have rejected the word of the Lord of a God. They haven't done that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord of a God. Because of that, if you are wise enough, you understand your position, why you are suffering through life. Have you been clear with God? Your names have to be recorded in the list as we read yesterday. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who you are, I do not know. Why? Because you are not walking in the will of God, doing the work of God. You have been called to such kind of a great holy calling in the church age, to such kind of a great heavenly calling in the church age, to such kind of a great highest and the best calling called to be Anno in the church age. <laughs> but why do you want to perish? as dung of this earth. The same thing he, to he tells in Malachi 2. I will put dung upon their faces because they're not doing the will of God. Then existing apostate Israel, the present existence of apostasy church, but the difference between them, they did not have the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. We have in us the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. We have for us the completed canon of scripture to look and to pursue from Genesis to Revolution and learn the word of God and the will of God and the plan of God. They did not have the half of the thing what we have now, the New Testament. But you are doing more worse than them. And you're not even ashamed of that. If anyone would ask, as Pastor Peter would say, why you believe in Christ, explain to us. You'll not even find enough reasons to give for believers. Fathers, you can go and answer and shut the mouth of this foolish and arrogant people who do not believe in Christ. And he says, shutting the mouth of this foolish and arrogant people is the will of God the Father in heaven. But what are you finding today in your pulpits? Can you find? You're not finding it, dear brother. Every time you look, you're losing out. The plan of God, the will of God, because you're believing and obeying. You're lovers rather than pastor teachers being sent by God. If they have been truly sent by God, they would daily teach to you the word of God in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. No compromise because the thoughts in the virtual language of the scriptures are absolutely unique. You cannot find them anywhere else in your translations. One Hebrew word or one Greek word is equivalent to somewhere around 20 or 30 English words. Which one you will fit there for translation? Except Lord God, the Holy Ghost could guide you to teach the truth. So here, dear brethren, she says... In Hosea 2.5, For their mother hath played the herlad that is called to be the spiritual adultery. She hath conceived them that hath shamefully 
For she said, I will go after my lovers that give my bread, my water, my wool, my flax, my oil, and my drinks. Therefore, now the Lord God says, the punishments of your life, people who are suffering with the problems in the details of life. He says, therefore, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her paths. And she shall follow after her lovers, you know, not find her paths in the sense to know the true God. Today, people are trying to think having enough of salary is enough to run the home and they are happy with God. No, though you have enough of salary, you'll find all the way no satisfaction of, of peace to your soul. And at the end, the right after you die, rest in peace. No, you cannot even rest that time as well. He says over here, I will hedge up thy way. You know, the hedging up of the way is very, very important, dear brother. It is called to be sukh. And the word sukh meant to say, you know what? I will make so many hurdles in your life. As we read that word for us in Ezekiel chapter 3 in verse 20 and 21, towards a righteous one, the way how God the Father would put a stumbling block. Because he is righteous and at God the Father, why does he put a stumbling block? Because they are not growing up into scribes. They're not taking a serious route to take in to become a disciple of the word of God and grow up into scribes. Though so he says, I will hedge, I will put a stumbling block. The same thing over here, Sukh, what we find, he's going to give you enough pressure in life for the reason that you are not growing up to be a scribe. Because if you would love to be a scribe, as Luke teaches to us again in chapter 13 and 14, why you call Lord, Lord, he says, Verily, verily, for truth I would say, though you may say you might have eaten and drank in the presence of God, and you have heard the word in the streets, that's the reason. Your lovers will teach to you the word in the streets, in the sense not the church age Bible doctrine, which is called to be the polypyclos wisdom of God, Ephesians 3. They will teach to you how to behave well, as we have been illustrated from A to Z, your, your destination is Z, but they say B is good, C is good. But you are not reaching the destination of Z. If you know once the destination of Z, then you would look the details of B, you would look the details of C, and you will be yourselves to be pure, because you will not abstain for those sucking details of life, which will just suck you off, to kill off your time, not to make up yourselves to be in the fellowship of the Word of God, which, will, which is just going to kill you off. He says, you will be very clearly aware about them as a mature man in the word of God and you will be looking to redeem the time and you will not be entangled yourselves into the yoke of bondage. You will stand free or set free yourselves from such kind of details of life and you will come back to be in the will of God the Father alone. But you are not growing up. So you say, B is my destiny. You, you end up your life there, but your destiny is Z. You have to pass down the remaining characters. So, every day, taking up your cross, following my Christ, is going to the destiny called as Z. That's what we find in Second Corinthians chapter 13 in verse 5. Catarismos and the catarisis process. The same thing explained in Ephesians 4, 13 and 14. We read that. The catarismon process, the catarismos process. So this is what we pray your perfection. We find that in 2 Corinthians 13. Not the wish, perfection, catarismos. Your end, your destiny where you have to reach. And the process is catarismon. Day by day carry your cross, follow Christ. Do not be entangled once again into the details of life or the yoke of bondage and do not learn the word of God. So he says, be careful about that. So you now engage to reach your destiny. Know what is it? The same thing again in Hebrews 6. Do not be still drinking milk. Or again the same standards of laying down your hands or doing this baptism, that, resurrection or judgments. Let's go on for perfection. Let's go on for telelios. Your B, C, D and F will be all these details. And pastors are teaching today for you those details. They are not giving you that you will be speechless if you have found naked. In order to be found not naked, you have to wear up your wedding garments. And wedding garments are the wife which Christ in Isaiah 61.10 records. 
you have to do the battles of the Lord, the salvation work of my Christ, and how every day engaging in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. So dear brethren, here we find, I will put a hedge. That means I will put pressures in your life so that you could come, I can look your path. The path of becoming scribe. Here also we find the two ancient Hebrew alphabetical words saying first the thorn and then the hand of a scribe. So he puts the hedge so that you could know that you are departed to become a scribe. So come back and become a scribe. That's in very simple words. So behold, I will hedge up thy way. What is the way? The way which you have to be direct, the course of life, wherewith you have to get every thought into captivity for Christ in your thinking that you have to be a scribe. So what is going to do that now? The path which has designed for you to be a scribe when you are neglected, he is going to make it up to become like thorns. The word thorns is called to be seer. And the word seer is nothing but having pressure in your head in all the ways, all the angles. And people, when they're having such pressures, you know, the details of life, the, ch the son issue, the daughter issue, the wife issue, the financial issues, the bankrupt issues, all those things, is going to put thorns. Actually, it should be in your ways towards cry, but you have left that. Now, Christ, our Lord of God says, enough is the evil you'll have for that particular day. Do not worry. Take up your cross every day. Follow my Christ. Seek the righteousness of Lord God first. Then all these things will be added unto you, he said. But we don't do it. First you seek my righteousness and my kingdom. Then I will give you about these things. Pagans worry. Why you worry? But you become a great worrying factor than pagans. <laughs> so he says, I'll put thorns. And that thorns will be in your head to divert your mind. But God the Father says, first you give to me, as he sent through his servant as well Elijah, when we look. And he said to that woman, though, though she says she has only a little stick and little dove, he says, first you prepare and give for me. Until the drought could go, the widow and the, and the son of him and Elijah never went out of the foot. First give to God. Your time, in the tithe of your day, every day, not the income. Income any foolish person also can give. Your tithe of your time every day. Give that first to God. It's irrespective of the things that are happening. First you give to God and see how God the Father would make showers of blessings in your life. Not money, but your time to God. So, dear brethren, we have to wake up. Why you are having thorns in your life? Why God the Father has put a hedge in your life? You may be saying that you are righteous. You may be saying that I can also have an invitation to go to the wedding, wedding, uh, wedding of his son in, in the heaven. So you might have entered there, but you have found no clothes. He would say, Friend, wear your wedding garments. You may say, I was righteous. I believed. I followed this like the Pharisee, the way how he said. I fast twice a week. I do this. I do that. But who has been more justified? The one who beat his breast saying that I am a sinner. Father, forgive me. Be the one who has come to his consciousness to understand that he hasn't grown up to be a scribe. The word of Lord God, what it demands. He hasn't been. And he is the one who will be given mercy as we look into that example of a sinner and a Pharisee. The one who went more justified because he's giving you one more day to come and wear up your wedding garments because the will of God the Father is none to be perished. The lake of fire has been prepared for the fallen angels and the head of it called, called Lucifer or Satan. It is not prepared for man, but man by ignorance of the word of God, by ignorance of the salvation of Christ. They are making their places to be in the hell with Satan. And there, there is all the time burning of fire. The worm dieth not, the fire quencheth not. <laughs> the greater you squelch, Lord God, the Holy Ghost over here, the greater you are rejecting to wear your wedding garments, the greater you are rejecting to grow up in grace under the knowledge of Bible doctrine. 
the greater you will find great pleasure in the hell. Don't worry, you can enjoy that time your time and you can go on to build up to give reasons. Lord, why did I do this? You will regret a lot. Before father, when he's asking you, wear your wedding garments, you will be speechless. But in the hell, you will repent, you will regret for every second of your life that God the Father has planned for you. For example, your 120 years of life. That's the greatest. In that you remove the first 20 years because you lose it out in the standards of your stupidity of childhood or coming not to the maturity of the word of God. You lose it out to many things. So, calculating your 120 years years and in that if you would calculate first for one year you have 365 days according to this calendar or that calendar but the Julian calendar will be different Gregorian calendar will be different so in that 365 days you're going to have with you in a day 86,400 seconds so 24 hours followed by 3,600 seconds so you will get the standards as 24 into 3600, which will be 86,400 seconds in a day. Now we have to calculate this into 365 days. It would be almost all somewhere around for you to say 3 crores, 15 lakhs, 36,000 seconds. And you find that in your billion, trillion you can calculate that. So he says in our Indian standards that 3 crores, 15 lakhs, 36,000 seconds. And in that we would just remove out 20 years of your life if you're surviving for 120 years on this earth. Because the 20 years of your maturity and XYZ standards till you could come to the fear of the Lord, it is gone. So now you simply add or three or this three crores fifteen lakhs thirty six thousand into just hundred years of your lifespan on this earth. So it will just increase furthermore of your we are calculating this in the seconds. And if you calculate that in the standards of hours, because per day you will have somewhere around twenty four hours, it would give you exactly around uh three crores or, th uh, or one crore, th uh, or, or it is 13 crores, 14 lakhs. So, if you would simply calculate that in such a way, it would give you around 13 crores of hours. Or if it would go to be in the standards of that word, what you call in seconds, for one year, you are going to get in the sight of the Lord of a God, because in one day, you will get 86,000 into 365 days. That's very simple. It gives you exactly as 3 crores or 13 lakhs, 3 crores, 13 lakhs, 90,000 seconds. Or it can be 3 crores, 14 lakhs approximately in one year. Or reduce it to be 50,000, so you get 3 crores, 13 lakhs. So this many seconds for one year, you multiply that into 100. So now you will get in very simple words saying that it will be somewhere around uh, so maybe uh, th 313 crores and 90 lakhs seconds. So it will be 313 crores or 90 lakhs seconds for 100 years of your life. And there, for that every second when you're burning out in the hell, you will realize why at least I haven't come up to take up my cross every day. This is at least only 100 span. This is, a, this is a span of only 100 years what we calculated. Though you live 120 years because 20 years till you could reach the maturity or when you could reach the God consciousness stage till that time. So the people who have been not reached like the small children, God consciousness and all, they will be automatically saved. But when you are an adult who have been coming up to be in God consciousness, to take up a reasoning attitude, from there on your time begins. Every second of your life, it will be like a crystal clear picture. In a day, we may have 86,400 seconds. And in that, we love to sleep for eight hours. Again, you can calculate that in that 86,400 seconds. You can calculate how much of the seconds you will remove. It is eight into 3600. So you'll get exactly 28,000 800 seconds. So in that you have to minus 86,400. So you'll be getting approximately 57,600 seconds. 
So in this 57,600 seconds, your activity of your having your, your conscious and your subconscious mind working together. The remaining eight hours, your subconscious mind goes on to continue the clock. It doesn't sleep. The conscious mind will go out to sleep. So here, the remaining 57,600 seconds or whatever the calculation you get approximately, say around 58,000 nearly, in that every day, those 58,000 seconds, you will be taking there in the lake of fire to understand why at least I rejected God. Why at least I haven't given number one priority to Bible doctrine. Why at least I have wasted my time on the futile things of this earth, which could have been given me a, a kick of your adrenaline things, but it was not necessary to destroy the flesh of God, because this is the temple of God. You will understand when you're burning it out in the lake of fire for eternity, forever. God the Father loves to give everyone eternal life. But how you are preparing for it, you're going to get it. Some for eternal condemnation, because we read that in Daniel, and some for resurrection of life, resurrection of the just. So the time now, what you're spending is what how you calculate. The things what have been given now is what the emergency or the things what you to tell you that you have to look very carefully where you are going to end up your life. Is it being there in the presence of God the Father or you want to be with your lovers? Every second of your life, there in the lake of fire when you are burning because that's no end. It's not just like the thousand years of million rule of my Christ so that he can remove you out from there and he can give you again a new chance now. The chance for us is right now. Every second of your life to redeem. Therefore we have been said, purchase the time, redeem the time, be not be unwise, but rather be wise in the sight of God. Calculate your days of thinking in Christ. Be wise, redeem the time, look according to the Acribos, which is called in Ephesians 5, 15 and 16, meant to say, to look upon the demands of the word of God and be qualified for it. Do not let go your time. Redeem the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. He says in Ephesians 5, 18, do not be drunk, but rather be controlled. When you're in the influence of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, you would look upon to count your days unto wisdom. You would nowhere spend your time in that which is of a duplicate things. Just go to a shop, give him some duplicate currency, he will not accept it. In the same way, when you're looking into your time, redeeming the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, you don't want to spend your time in the silly, stupid things of this life. Because your eternity is in view. Your point Z, your destiny is in view. You cannot spend your time from B, C, D, E, F, G. You would go on for perfection. You would go on to look what is exactly my life after death. You may say, we will be exintalysis or the way how we would just be stopping there. No. You have your life after you die. Till you could reach the resurrection body, you will be in the interim body. And afterwards at the judgment seat of Christ, the things what you have done, you will be either qualified to go to heaven or you'll be qualified to go to hell. The time is now to prepare. Be tact. To know your enemy, who is like a roaring lion, taking away the word of God from you all the days of your life, giving you all mannerisms of uh, supplements or replacements. It comes up with smartphone, it comes up with your boyfriend, girlfriend, crazy. It comes up with the standards of your details of life to be rich, with the standards of luxuries of this life to make it up. But you cannot even take and go the dust upon your body, far less you think you have fought the good fight to Lord. Now, dear brethren, he says in very clear words, you have heard the word in the street, not in the church. A church is a place where it is a ground and pillar of truth. You haven't heard the word of God there. Therefore, you haven't qualified, you haven't been prepared to encounter your Lord. And there, when you're burning in the lake of fire for the hundred years of your life, which you spent, which we calculated almost all three crores or four crores of seconds, every second will be bought up. 
Every second you will be taking up to say, why at least I rejected the word of God? Why at least I haven't learned the mind of Christ? Why at least I haven't spent my time in learning the mind of truth? Why I stupidly wasted my time in running behind silly stupid things of this life which are of no value? In spite of all the peer pressure you have, every day give time to Christ. First have your relationship with Christ. All the details will follow. No matter whatever may be the pressure, that's what we are looking. I will put a hedge upon your ways. The word hedge is sook. I will put such a pressure in your life that you are forgetting to become a scribe. Wake up. Where is the solution? If your wise understand what went wrong, he says in Jeremiah 9 verse 12 and 13, they left the word of God. They left the mind of Christ. That's where they left wrong. That's where the things went wrong. Not the problem with your genetics, not the problems with your hereditary, not the problems with the stupid men counseling you for your health. You know, dear brethren, the things which God graciously has provided for us to survive on this earth before flood, no, no non-veg. After flood, he said, eat non-veg. Again, after that, he gave restrictions, clent and unclent. Again, afterwards, coming to the church age, no restrictions, anything sanctified in the Lord you can eat. And you know, man has so pleasure to eat everything. And when he gets into a certain sickness of his age, or he has put upon certain age, you know, they have to say, what is the cholesterol levels in your body? And afterwards, they find whether it is a, a good cholesterol or a bad cholesterol. And afterwards, they would counsel, stop eating this. Stop eating this food. Control your diet. Make it up. Don't take more oil or don't take more rice. Don't take this. Don't take that. You know, all restrictions they love to give. And one of my friends who said he's going to cook only with the coconut oil and in that coconut oil, when it was good for him to make that bad cholesterol into good cholesterol, when they went to the checkup because he was using all mannerism of non-veg in that coconut oil, so doctor explained to him, if you take coconut oil with the crabs, not with fish or goat or something of the mutton. So he said, we stopped eating from coconut oil because doctor suggested if you take coconut oil with the crabs, cholesterol will be doubled up. You know how cautious the man is. They're not starving for the food of the word of God. They're not hunger for the food of the word of God. But they thought the best beautiful procedure for us is to make up the coconut oil. And when they're finding coconut oil with the wrong combination of crabs, cholesterol will be increased. So doctor suggested him, don't eat that. The graciously, oh, graciously what God the Father has provided for us, anything to eat, and access what you eat, it becomes a damage to your body. The same thing with what you ate, the same thing destroyed you. People would love to say, they smoke, they drink, they have this, they have that. That is going to destroy the flesh. The thing which you love the more, the same thing will destroy you. For example, your non-veg or your vegetarian, whatever it is. But with Christ our Lord of a God, the same thing applies. If allowed to carry his cross every day and follow my Christ, he said... Men at the age of 85, they had in them the vigor of 40. Men at the age of 120, their eyesight was not been dimmed. Neither their health has been abated. They were absolutely fit and fine because they spent the time in the presence of God. Men at the age when Sarai was not been there yet to become Sarah and to have the child, though it was against hope, they believed, against, they believed in God against hope. And God the Father, even after the birth of Isaac, he made Abraham to have his concubine or mistress, what you call, and he had five more sons with Keturah. It meant to say what? God the Father would revive our systems in such a way that it will be an example forever. So, Abraham walked with the Lord. Abraham spent the time with the Lord. Abraham was called to be the friend of the Lord. And David was being called to be the beloved of the Lord, a man after Lord God's own heart. And we find this example to teach if you are having your time to spend more with the Lord, no fear of worries of your health or hereditary on this earth. And foolishly, you love to go back and scan all the details of life. Why you have been in a such standards of nervous disorder or Alzheimer's disease or this or that. 
but you are not able to look. You have left the real path. Why God the Father has put a hedge? You are not able to understand that. He put a hedge because you should be a scribe. But you are a scribe in the details of life. You are a wise man in the thinking of life. As foolishly people would say, in one word, describe yourself. He would say, I am a wildlife. What you will do being a wildlife? Know the truth. If anyone would shine, let him shine that he understandeth the Lord. Let him shine that he has been acquainted with my Christ. Wildlife will be like a wild beast. You are not even born to be like an anthropos. Christians are born to be like an anthropos so that they could reach the telelio state of Christ. But wildlife kind of a man, their thinking will be like a wild beast. Yet they allow to maintain the moral values in this life. But here, dear brethren, when we look, why God the Father would give you such troubles, such thorns? Because of excess of the things what you take? Eating too much of non-veg? but not eating too much of word of God. In a Jeremiah 15, 16 or Ezekiel or even the book of Revolution when we find your words were found, O Lord, and I ate them. You know what a privilege it is. Not just to tear the Bible and read the pages, but to analyze and exegete the passages and to take into your frontal lobe so that your soul could now be transformed by the power of Lord God the Holy Ghost to being teaching to a human spirit. And now your soul from human viewpoint can become divine viewpoint and learn the word of God and the fear of God and the life of God. So words were found and I ate them. That's the meaning. But you don't come to the church. You don't learn the word of God. So you don't eat excess of the word of God. And always it should be reserved. For example, 3,000 cc of air which you breathe in, all the time you get out only 1,500. The 1,500 is always reserved in your lungs. So all the time you should be reserved in the Word of God. You should have for you to look. Therefore we have been said, meditate upon the Word of God day and night. It is the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to teach you the things. But you are running behind your lovers. So if we look over here in Hosea 2, 7, coming back, she says, And she follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake. Uh, first we shall read verse number 6. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a wall. That is what, no matter however you go, you cannot pass that wall. Because God the Father has erected that wall. <laughs> and she shall not find a path. You may go, the greater you live to come back and confess your sins and search diligently in the word of God your life or looking your life into the mirror of the word of God, the greater God the Father is going to build up a wall and you will never find your paths. The paths where you should be in the vigor and valor of your life, the great word of God to be like a scribe. You will never encounter that, he says. And she shall follow after her lovers. You know, the people who would say, come unto me, we will do mimics, we will do miracles, we will do this, we will do that, Jimmick, you know that. And after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. The word overtake over here meant to say that they, she will not depart them and she shall seek them and she shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go now to my husband. You know, she wants to have a satisfaction of healings or miracles, but he says, no. She will not depart from them. She will seek them. She wants to be with them, but there is no solution from them. So then she will say, I will return to my first husband. It was better for me to be now than now. So she says, for it then it was better with me than now. That means earlier when I was there with the word of God in the work of Christ and the thinking of the Lord, it was better. And now she says, for she did not know that I gave her corn. He explains, even in such kind of a difficulties or backsliding Christians, the people who go on to be in the standards of not obeying the word of God, he says, even that time it is I who provided the grace. If it were not by the grace of God, there is nothing in this life that you can think of. So he says, for she did not know that I gave the corn and wine and oil and multiplied her gold and silver, but she prepared for Baal. Therefore will I return and take away my corn in the time, therefore my wine in the season, therefore and will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness. And now I will discover her lividness in the sight of her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of my hand. 
You know, these are the worst stages, dear brethren, what you are looking, apostasy to apostasy, to the core. I will also cause her myth to cease, her feast days, her new moon days, her Sabbath days, and all the Solomon fish. I will destroy her wines and her figs, whereof she hath said, These are my rewards that my lovers have given me, and I will take them, and I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. Dear brethren, you have to learn these things very, very carefully. Because you may be thinking, what is going wrong? I have invested for this. I have planned for this. And what is going wrong? Because you haven't looked to become the disciple of the word of Lord God. So you are facing these problems. Because it is Yehovah Elohim who maketh all these things. And I will visit upon her the days of Balim, wherein she burned incense to them. And she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels. And she went after her lovers and forget me, said the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. So he's giving her one more chance to make her heart to understand the word of God. And I will give her vineyards from thence and the valley of Echor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth and as in the days when she came up out of the land of Egypt and it shall be at that day said the Lord that you shall call me Ishi and you shall no more remember call Baal so she says I will take away the names of Baalim out of her mouth and they shall no more be remembered by their name in verse 16 of this words of Hosea 2 Ishi meant to say my husband my man Baal meant to say Lord and over here when we find this word Baal it is called to be as the things pertaining to uh, we find as a slave master relationship but here ishi meant to say that the way ish and isha they were so it is so he says you will call me my husband my lover my everything that means such kind of a fantastic relationship between wife and husband and today people they don't have that they show respect only outward but inward they hate each other it is like a slave master relationship. They don't have that love. They don't have that great integrity of care and respect. So in verse 17, For I will take away the names of Balim out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of the heaven and the creeping things of the ground. I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth and will make them to lie down safely. And I will betroth. That is what again, I will make them to be with me, called to be aras, that is called to be engaged. How does he engage? When your thinking has been according to the standards of the word of God, then only he's going to engage. So he's going to engage thee unto me, that is you unto me forever. And I will engage thee unto me in the standard. Now he uses, this is the thing actually I wanted to look. Righteousness in judgment, loving kindness, and in mercies. And I will even engage or make her to be mine unto me in faithfulness. And you shall know the Lord God. You know, God the Father, what he has made in the church is the new covenant or the new standards of this covenant. He has made us to be in righteousness. That's what we share, the righteousness of Christ, Second Corinthians 5.21 in judgment because he cannot go against his word by compromising his standards so he wants us to meet the standards of the word of god in loving kindness that is his mercy and truth as we see that law and the, the, the things pertaining to law came through moses but grace and truth or mercy and truth came from lord and savior jesus christ because mercy and truth have kissed to each other that's highly impossible but because of us christ our lord our god being sent the word of Lord God is so pure that it cannot give anyone mercy. But over there he has shown us the mercy through Christ so that we could be saved and we could be in that great covenant of the Lord as Christ. So here he says, I will now betroth, I will make her to be mine in the standards of righteousness, standards of justice. Righteousness and justice is called to be the holiness of God. His loving kindness and mercies, again called to be kesseth, followed by the standards of what we call rakum, rakum meant to say compassion, is unfailing love. So I will betroth her in faithfulness. Again, the word faithfulness is called for us as emuna, and emuna is nothing but again, fidelity called to be the truth. The way how you are in truth to God, the same thing you will be. So he says, it shall come to pass in that day I will hear, said the Lord, I will hear, 
with the heavens and i will shall hear the earth uh, i will i will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth and the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil and they shall hear zazrael the word zazrael over here it meant to say god sows and then furthermore and i will sow her unto me in the earth and i will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy i will say to them that which were not my people you are my people and they will say you are my god dear brother and these things are very very important over here because we are running more time so we are rushing but the truth is dear brother and he says it shall come to pass when he has made a betrothal with you in righteousness in justice in loving kindness in mercies and to be of faithfulness unto him he says i will hear said the lord god i will hear the heavens the word here meant to say no matter whatever may be the distorted thinking i will respond from the heaven because the things they shall hear the earth that means o earth o earth o earth as we read in jeremia listen to the word of god so it is so the earth shall listen and the earth shall make you to come to the corn the wine the oil that is absolutely true because god soweth it zazrael and i will sow her unto me in the earth i will have mercy again of the word mercy over here is rakum compassions and i will obtain again mercy i will have mercy again i will obtain mercy this is twice being used and then he says i will say as the word says for us as lo ami or the ami whatever we find the definition though that are not my people they will be my people and you will say you are my god so dear brethren when there is no proper exposition of the word of truth there we find people perishing so here the same thing what we find over here that in hosea chapter 2 again in jeremiah chapter 9 he pulls our mind to understand the teachings of the word of god because the greater we reject the word of god the greater our life is been ruined so in comparison to the standards which christ our lord our god wanted every believer to be a disciple on the word of god and since what we find over there in the standards of jeremia chapter 9 who is wise let them understand and since lord our god has made us to realize that we have been given in the great fear of the lord our god would come upon them those who are really walking as lord and savior jesus christ intends in making disciples of all the nations so in first corinthians 11 we read be you followers of me even as i am also the follower of christ and here a great example is that you have to be a preacher as a leader that's what we find the preacher as a leader who has been bound to set up an example and this is what he says that you have to be all the time in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost doing that which is right and good in the sight of god and at dear brethren he says in hebrews 8:10 for this is the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days said the lord i will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and i will be to them a god and they shall be to me a people so talking about the people of israelites he has executed that same thing because we will be the first fruit of his resurrection orders he has told we to be in simple words the scribes writing the word of the lord in matthew 13:52 he said kingdom of heaven is like a disciple growing up into scribe so he says i will write but now he is executing that for us in practical way of life that's what he says over here dear brethren in jeremiah chapter 31 and here we look again in verse number 33 saying this shall be the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days said the lord i will put my law in their inward parts and write in their hearts and will be their god and they shall be my people when we write the word of god like a scribe when we are growing up that's when we are really the disciples of the word of god in second corinthians 3:3 3, 3, he says for as much as you manifestly declared to be the epistle of christ ministered by us written not with ink but with the spirit of the living god not in the tables of stone but in the fleshy tables of the heart that's the scribe who goes on to inculcate in his heart every day the word of god so he says over there in again second corinthians 3:7 but if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glory 
warriors, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit, what we are having now, the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, be rather glorious? Therefore we find in Exodus 24, Nadab and Abihu going with Moses and Aaron, because Nadab and Abihu resembles we, the Gentiles in the standards, but had God the Father has given even them to find the grace. So the spiritual grace of great word of God. So he says in James 1.18, Of his own will he beget us with the word of truth. You know, now we have been born with the word of truth so that we could be the scribes of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. That's what we have told. The first fruits, though in Hebrews 8.10, he talks about the covenant with Israel, the coming, but now that covenant is executing with us as scribes to the word of God. Therefore, he says in James 1.21, Lay apart all filthiness, all superfluity and naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word of God. And the word engrafted over here is called to be en Futos, that is implanted, supplanted, which has been engrafted for you, which is able to save your souls. Why not your flesh? Because you die. Why not your spirit? When your soul has been transformed with your human spirit, you're going to be in the presence of God, found not naked. So the word of God is able to save your souls. The word of God is what we have been bigot. In again, First Peter one twenty three, we look, being born not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So there is no excuse, dear brother, and if you are not making up your life in the standards of the word of God, the same thing we read yesterday in Acts chapter 20, commending us to the grace and to the word of God, which is able to build you up, because you will find vagabond exorcists. You will find the dogs of the things which would love to be ravenous wolves in nature. So, dear brethren, how much more of a great ministry God the Father has given unto us. So, he says that the people who are joined to the flesh, they are joined to the death or corruption. But they that are joined to Christ, they are joined to the living God forever. So which way you want to go? You want to be the standards of still death? You want to make it up to the standards to forget that why God the Father has put the hedge? Every second of your life you will regret at the judgment seat of Christ. For not becoming that word of God, though he has given us a new covenant, a new covenant of becoming a scribal disciples to Lord, or disciples grown up into scribes unto Lord. You will really find a tough time, dear brethren, because our name has to be recorded over there when the demons could know about you and they could tremble, saying that, Paul I know, Jesus I know. And Apostle Paul's intention when he's writing that, follow me, it doesn't mean to say in the standards of becoming imitators. He meant to say, the way how I have led an example by teaching the word of God, the way how I have given everything, counting everything to be worthless before the excellency of the knowledge of God, the way which the rule which I have followed in making disciples, because in doing good, he has left nothing back. He did it faithfully. He did it graciously. And what a great privilege it is for us in the church age to know if we are really the true believers being surrounded by the grace of God. So the great fear will fall upon them when they walk in the truth. And today the Christendom is not teaching the truth. And in fact, indeed, the lovers or the men who are not wise, they have entered into the pulpits and they are diverting your mind to take up your cross every day. And they say, weekly ones you come, no matter, no problem. If you're not having any money, you can pay through the scan code. <laughs> really, dear brother, you're ruining the lives of this man. They will be found naked. God the Father would ask, wear wedding garments. You will be speechless. No excuse. Almost all for your four crores of seconds in this hundred years of life, what you would calculate. Because in a day you may have 86,400 seconds, then for 100 years. Calculate that first into one year, 365 days. And then put that into 100 years. You will easily understand how many seconds God the Father has given you on this earth. And in those seconds, how much of your access of food, what you ate, developing in you the cholesterols. And you love to stop that now because you don't want to cook it up because it will destroy your body. But you haven't given to cook up your time to eat the spiritual meat. 
The spiritual manna, though God the Father is tapping his feet every day to give to them, those who love to come back and take to be dressed with the wedding garments in Christ. You have not yet taken up those things. You are neglected in the things that which could be possible for you, but the things which have been demanded in the word of the Lord, you never even thought of that to be. You will pay a tough time, dear brother. Your destination is Z, not B or C or D. You begin with A. And you have to be prepared to reach your destiny Z. But many of the people that are dying in the stage of B, some are dying in the stage of M, or some are dying in the stage of N. But they are not able to make up their life to look in the viewpoint of calculating grace given for them to see the standards of Z. They have been given such kind of a great word of righteousness in our hands. How many times he says that he is able to give you to the engrafted word which is going to save your souls. You have been born again, not of an incorruptible seed, but uh, you have been born of a, not a corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible seed. How many things we have been told about this great word of God, which is able to build up, which is able to make up to fight the entire panoply of God. It has been called the word of truth in Ephesians 1.13, in 2 Timothy 2.15. It is called the word of righteousness in Hebrews 5.13. It is called the gospel of peace in Acts chapter 10 verse 36. And again, Ephesians 6.15. It is the word of faith in Romans 10.8. It is the gospel of salvation, Romans 1.16, Ephesians 1.13. It is called in simple words, the word of truth. In Ephesians 6.17. Because the Lord our Savior, who is a captain of our salvation, he is the truth. He is our righteousness. He is the truth, John 14.6. He is our righteousness. The man who hasn't been sin was made sin on behalf of us. Second Corinthians 5.21. He is our peace, Ephesians 2.14. And we come over here to preach that gospel of peace. That peace which has been given unto us now, and that peace should be maintained forever when we grow up into grammatias. He is the author and finisher of our faith, Hebrews 12, 2. He is our salvation, Luke 2, 30. He is the word of God, John 1, 1. And in Romans 13, 14, he exhorts the believers, that is Apostle Paul, to put on Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in whom alone we can have our victory. So we have been said, soldiers of Christ, arise and put up on your armor. Be strong in the strength which God supplies you through his eternal son in his mind. That is the word of God in the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. Be strong in the Lord God of hosts. That is Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And in his mighty power, who in the strength of Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, commanded us to Christ, commanded us to Holy Ghost to prepare us to be the Lord's wife. And through Lord God, the Holy Ghost, we are more than conquerors. But dear brethren, the problem with us is, you are not in a stage of God-fearing man. A God-fearing man is the one who walks in the conscious, always having the sense of being in the presence of God, and he knows his responsibility to God. Such men will not only have the moral discernment between right and wrong, but will discern the path that God marks out for his people in the midst of the surrounding darkness and confusion. Because the Lord God says over there in Psalms 25 verses 12 through 14, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. He gives such to know his mind. They will see clearly that God has promised blessing for his people which will surely be fulfilled, however difficult the day and however great the confusion and opposition may be, they will come every day to carry their cross and they will follow my Christ. And God-fearing people are produced when there is proper teaching of the word of God in your pulpits. The sad part in the present Christendom, as we approach one more year, 2022, the number six. The God, the Father, want to betroth us with righteousness and with justice and with mercies and with compassion and with great faithfulness in us. He will be like the way I would say. I have found and searched for man to fill the gap, but there were none. <coughs> there were none to be the truth. And that is the fate as he said through the prophets in the past, the same fate what we can look today in the present. 
They are the men to clear the thirst of the Lord. <coughs> Though the harvest is plenty, the righteous labors are few. Where is the great thirst of the Lord of a God or the great pleasure of Lord God to be fulfilled through our lives? Boast not in your wisdom, boast not in your riches, boast not in your power. He says, boast that you know Lord. Boast that you understand a thing. Boast that you understand that you have been called to be a scribe and to grow up to be a scribe in the Lord. And boast that you are getting every thought into captivity for Christ. The greater you reject to fear the word of Lord God, the greater your life will be ending up in misery, thorns surrounded by you. As they were in the place of bokim, thorns and thistles around them, you are having now the sanctification of your idols, the idols of the lusts of your flesh, the lusts of your soul. And these idols and the lusts, what you are planning, they will never qualify you. And at the hell, when you are burning, not to be found into the wedding garments in the presence of the Father, He would call you friend, and He will be speechless. We are on a pilgrimage trip. This earth is not permanent for us. Prepare yourselves to meet the Lord of a God, being to be God-fearing men. And the way how God-fearing men will love the word of Lord God than anything else on this life. The thing pertaining to the covenant which he would make with the Israelites is executing right now with us to be the scribes, Matthew 13, 52, and going up in making disciples of all the nations. And if you're not making disciples, he says in Revelation 14, the good works will follow them. They have ceased. The good works is nothing but going and making disciples. If you haven't made that, You'll not find your garments, you'll not find your works. And that's the reason he says, the true fear of the Lord our God will begin when there is proper revolution of the word of God in the pulpits. And if every believer would confirm to the image of Christ, as the word became flesh, so that now we, after believing in Christ, being in the flesh, should transform to the word of God by putting to death the deeds of the flesh, Really, what a great blessing it would be to God the Father to look us into heaven, confirming each and every believer to the perfect and complete image of Christ. Dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to link to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where with you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry so thorn log on. Herald the word in season and out of season, because the Dharma from my witnesses where they have been called. The number one Dharma Truma witnesses in Welling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two Dharma Truma witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, when there is no proper revolution of the word of the Lord, people not will perish and they will not have the fear of thee. But in your grace, O oh Father, you have sent, right from the beginning of your time, many great men in this present Christendom to teach the truth. In the present standards of the present Christendom, O oh Lord, men are loving the lovers rather than to have a direct, legitimate relationship with thee as you being your husband. Help us, Father, to teach the truth as much as possible according to the will which has been completely given for us to know, and that which has been taught according to the Holy Ghost of the Lord of our God in your scriptures being recorded and kept for us in eternity past. Nothing on this earth is more dear unto us, O Lord, than to teach the complete counsel of the Word of God and not to withhold anything, because you desire none to perish, but rather you want everyone to be 
complete knowledge of the word of God being saved through salvation in Christ Jesus our Lord. So Father, what a great high and holy, heavenly, unique plan of your calling you have called every believer. Though Hebrews 8.10 would continue, but you have given us that to experience right now in the church age as scribes grown up in writing upon our hearts the word of God. Help us, Father, to understand this new thing of yours and make us to realize your great calling in the church age. So, Father, we are thankful for this privilege which you have given unto us, and we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost would enlighten and challenge us by this message only for the praise of thy glory. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name we pray, Father, the Lord God the Holy Ghost enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.